honorable member for BKB Beijing. <laughs> Merci, M. le Président. Et j'aimerais tout d'abord indiquer que je vais partager mon temps avec euh, la députée de Vancouver East. Dans les 100 premiers jours, M. le Président, dans les 100 premiers jours d'un gouvernement du NPD, nous lancerons une enquête nationale sur les femmes autochtones disparues ou assassinées. Monsieur le Président, il y a des causes systémiques de la violence contre les femmes et les filles autochtones au pays et il faut les régler. Les structures et les attitudes qui permettent cette violence de continuer doivent par conséquent être examinées, exposées et adressées. Et la seule façon d'y arriver sur le plan national est par l'institution de cette commission d'enquête publique nationale, Monsieur le Président. Indigenous women experience more violence because they are indigenous and because they are women. Amnesty International found that indigenous women are most likely to die before non-indigenous women in this country and more likely to die violently. In many indigenous cultures and societies, we are taught to honor women as life givers, as knowledge keepers, as storytellers, as medicine women, as our word carriers, as community members and human beings, and colonialism has impacted neg negatively on those values, Mr. Speaker. The violence that is perpetrated against Indigenous women is the same violence against the environment today, the same violence that assaulted parents and grandparents in residential schools. Let me quote from the Supreme Court of Canada case in the case of Arvis's Ipoli. The court said, courts must take judicial notice of such matters as history of colonialism, displacement, and residential schools, and how that history continues to translate into lower education attainment, lower incomes, higher unemployment, higher rates of substance abuse, and suicide, end of quote. And yet, this Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister has incredulously said not too long ago, we have no history of colonialism in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a little story, Mr. Speaker, about a little boy named Johnish, who was sent to residential school in 1954. He was five years old never came back, apparently died the first year he arrived in residential school. His mom, Mr. Speaker, his mom never knew until after two years of his death. His mom, my mom, for 40 years never knew where John Ish was buried. For 40 years, Mr. Speaker. And it is only by coincidence one day that my sister, one of my sisters happened to be in the area and someone told her, I know where your little brother is buried. So after 40 years, my sister filmed the site where he was buried, brought the film back to my mom to show her. Can you imagine? Forty years, Mr. Speaker, until she found out where, he, where my little brother lay. And I don't know if you've seen your mother cry. I saw my mother cry many times. But the day she saw that video, I had never seen her cry that way. That's closure, Mr. Speaker. That's what we call closure. That's how closest she could get to a final closure for her son. And this is what indigenous families need in this country. That is what they want. That is why they are calling for this national inquiry. 
Where is the Canada we used to know, Mr. Speaker? Where is it? The one that has a history of upholding high standards of human rights and social democratic values in this country. Where is it? Even when faced with fundamental legislative changes and challenges to the social structure, we used to have that Canada. It's no longer there. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I submit very respectfully that an inquiry would follow in that legacy that this country has. And this is why the NDP is calling for that inquiry, and this is why the NDP and, and other families, together with other families and Canadians in this country, want that inquiry. So I stand here today, Mr. Speaker, to conclude. I stand here because I want the families of the missing and murdered Indigenous people, uh, mm -hmm. ladies, women, so that we can heed their calls for a national inquiry. It is their time. Give them their time so that they can find that close, the close that they can get close to that closure that they also need. So therefore, Mr. Speaker, this is why my party, this is why on this side of the House, no, no longer than 100 days after our election as, in, as, a, as a government, we will call that inquiry and we will give, and provide that justice, provide that justice.